Okay, welcome to another iPad painting tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm gonna paint a spring field with a really nice blue sky and bright, vibrant greens and different colors. As always, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you can use different apps and different tablets to probably recreate the same steps and the same overall effect. So within Procreate, I've opened a default A4 canvas. I've pre-selected some colors, which are here. If you look in the video description, you'll notice there are some hexadecimal codes which you can type in one at a time here. Press enter, the color will appear up here and you can piece it together yourself. But there's also a link that takes you to my Patreon page and you can download the color file for free. You'll also find links for my Instagram and a Facebook group which has over 30,000 members where people share their work and give feedback to each other and obviously I get to respond to your work as well. In terms of the brushes I'm gonna be using, I always use the brushes at the default setting. I'm gonna be using within airbrushing, the soft brush, which is at the top, not the smaller ones down here, but the bigger ones at the top, the medium brush, and then within the artistic brushes, I'm going to be using the hearts brush, and also perhaps the spray paint splatter texture. Now there's also a possibility that I'll be using the organic rainforest texture. We'll see how it goes with the other ones. So with all that said and done, let's get started. So on our first layer, we'll go to our colors, and we've got this blue on the top row, and I'm just going to drag it from the color there into our canvas and let go. Now it's a really strong, vibrant blue. So I'm gonna stay on the same layer in fact for this. I'm gonna go back to my blues and I've got this really light blue. I'm gonna to go to my airbrushing, the soft brush at the top. I'm gonna to put the size up to 15% and the opacity up to 100%. So I'm going to do my brush mark at the midway point and a little bit of above and below. So really quite a thick band of that light blue. Then I'm gonna to go to my adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in to about 70%. I am going to create another layer, go back to my colors, and I got this third color along, which is a more subdued gray blue. We'll stay on the soft brush, but we're gonna reduce it down to about 8% size. We'll keep it on the 100% opacity. And just below the halfway line now, I'm going to add this. Then I'm gonna go back to my adjustments, my Gaussian blur, and blur it in to about the 40%, like that. And you can see the difference if you deselect it, it has added an extra bright element there at the bottom. We're going to create another layer, back to our colors, and we've used these first three colors. So we're gonna to go to this brightest color now, still using the soft brush. We're going to put it down to about 4% size and much lower on the opacity, it's about 30%. And we're going to start just building in. In fact, we'll turn it even lower than that. So we'll put it at around 15% initially. And I'm just going to start building in some textures and with a kind of light. Now, obviously the opacity makes partially the difference, but the rest of the difference is how much you press. So if you press really hard, you're gonna get a very clear stroke. But if you press lightly, you can really start to build it up in smaller increments and you get a much softer appearance. So I'm pressing really quite lightly and I'm building up my cloud in very subtle degrees and I'm building it up very gradually. I'm also doing this kind of a circular motion. Now when I want to build up the luminosity, the, the brightness of this, I'll just keep going over the area and it keeps magnifying and building and that's a really nice way of building it. Now there is a clouds brush. If you go to the elements, there is a clouds brush and you can experiment with that too. You know, it gives you a similar kind of effect, but it, I find that it, it just gives you, when you zoom in, a very specific kind of outlines and shapes that I find a little bit too much. And also I like to be in control of exactly what I'm adding to my image rather than being too reliant upon definite brushes and textures. So back to my airbrushing and the soft brush. And building in a really more prominent cloud feature here in the foreground. Now, we have perspective, just like you would have perspective on things on the land. In the distance, things get smaller, then obviously clouds do as well. So we're showing some that are much closer to us here at the top. And as they get further away, they get smaller and they get closer to that horizon point which will be down here where it meets the land. So at the very top they're going to be bigger because they are closer to us and then the distant ones will be lower down and smaller. So don't try and copy the exact cloud shape that I'm showing you here. I'm not copying an exact cloud shape myself so 
It's good to have references sometimes and look at the example of the kind of way that they look, but I tend to just make them up a little bit as they go along as well. And then maybe I'll start another cloud feature over this side as well. So all the clouds in the sky are gonna be this type of cloud. So just with this larger brush, try and get the main blocks and the main shapes in initially. You can be a little bit rough. You can always go back in with the eraser. With are working digitally, it's nothing you need to be afraid of. Block in the main shapes initially. And even at this stage, I'm doing it gradually, just tentatively starting to build it up. We're working with a larger brush, so we're just trying to get the broad strokes in, and then we'll start reducing the size of the brush and get some of the edges and some of the refined details. So I'm just gonna start building some middle distance clouds here. So again, a little bit lower down, nearer that horizon line, and they are gonna reduce in size. So I'm gonna reduce that brush down now to the top end of 2%, and then I can really start going into some of the edges and just defining some of the cloud shapes. So I'm using that round gestural application. So it hasn't changed, it's just a reduced ver version of it, so much smaller. And the sun is gonna be coming directly from above. So the top edge of those clouds is gonna be particularly defined in highlight. So you can reduce it down to the lower end of 2% as well. And we can really almost sort of chisel in a much clearer edge for the top part of these clouds. And you can also have some little breakaway tufts and just try to keep the, the round shape for these at the top edge. Now we can turn the opacity down even further, to put it more like about 5%, maybe turn it up a little bit and we can just really play around with subtle, very light extra features here that are just not standing out as much, but they're still there. And I'm going to continue, put it back up again because we want some slightly more standout features, but they're more distant, so we're at the lower end of 2% still. And we can add some more, again, increasingly small shapes of cloud as we get further away. And it really helps that sense of perspective straight away. I'll come back to this, I'm going to show you the next stage. So I'll create another layer, back to my colours, and we've got two different darker colours here. I'm going to go for the darker colour to begin with, and I'm gonna put it up to about 3% size, but low on the opacity at around 10%. And we're just trying to conceive of these as 3D shapes. So we have to try and imagine where the bottom part of this cloud is. And we're going to start adding similar shapes, but we're adding shadows to the underneath, the underside of it. So we'll start with this one. We're just gonna add a little bit of a shadow to that section. And then I'll go for the bit underneath it and add a little bit of a shadow to the bottom section of that piece. And sometimes what you want is to go for that lighter gray. And then just like we were doing before with a small brush, perhaps along that edge, we can just define the details, but it's not gonna be as bright as the top details, but we still got a little bit of clarity there. So back to my dark color again, I'm gonna put the brush size up a little bit more actually, two, three percent. And I think I'm just going to add a bit more of the dark tone to this one, give it some real weight. Now I'm going over it quite roughly, quite dramatically, just building it up. And I'd, I'd rather do this in very subtle layers and build it up by going over and over and over it. You're more likely to get a soft look that way. If you try and rush at it, you're going to get a harder edge and it just won't look as good. So I'm going to continue adding some shadows to the undersides of some of these other clouds. It's going to get less noticeable as it gets further away. It's going to blend in with the more hazy kind of atmosphere in the lower area. You're going to notice the darker contrasting tones in the really more foreground clouds, if you were. Now, we say foreground, they're not on the ground, obviously, they're in the sky, but they are closer to us. And I'm going to go back to my brighter white color and reduce it down to the 2% again. Leave it on the 
and just start adding more of these clouds and just repeating the same thing with it getting smaller towards the horizon and more spaced out and bigger when we get higher up. So I'm gonna also define some of these edges and just add more of these clouds and then we'll get onto the land areas. Maybe I'll turn it up a little bit again. So about 20% is a good middle ground for that brighter white color. And also play around. So you've got, I'm working at 2%, but even at the lower end of 2% or the top end of 2%, there's a big difference. So I'm gonna alternate between the lower part of 2% for the fine details, and those little textures, and then I'm gonna move it up again when I want to block in some bigger shapes. Remember the top edge of the cloud needs to have a distinct highlight on it. So sharpen it up with a smaller size and just make sure to amplify the brightness on that top edge. If you don't do that sufficiently, it's not going to convey the idea that the sun is above and shining down on them. So make sure you do that. I'm doing lots of almost grouped together, smaller amounts of cloud, lower down on that horizon, and almost to the point where they kind of start merging together really. And then we'll sharpen it back down to the 2%. In fact, I'll put the brightness up to about 40% now, so the opacity up, and I can just go in and out of these areas where they've all merged together a little bit and just redefine some of those top edges where it's necessary because the bright white in the distance is not going to be any dimmer. So it's just the dark colors that tend to get a little bit lighter and more diffused, but the bright colors tend to stay brighter even in the distance. And we can go in there with the dark gray and just on one or two of these, pick out some of the perhaps shadows. We do want more of it in the foreground. It's still in the 40%, I need to turn that down for this. So. We do want some of the gray colors, but just not as much. So just go lightly with this dark color, just to create some variation really. So towards the lower part of these clouds, you can add a bit more of these gray tones. And we could create another layer, go back to our colors, and we have this third color in. I'm going to use that now. I'm gonna put it up to about 8% size and low on the opacity at 10%. And I'm just gonna do a couple of strokes across that and it will just help merge them together a little bit. Don't do too much of it. We're just gonna help it merge there towards that horizon line. I'm gonna create another layer. I'll probably come back to the clouds and add a bit more refinement, but we're gonna keep moving forwards. So I've got this first color and I'm going to use the medium brush. I'm gonna put it at around 3% size and we'll keep it at the 40% opacity. And just at the lower part where the clouds are meeting the land, we'll just do a line across and then hold and it will snap to a straight line, like go. And it's only this section that we're really going to see. So I'm just gonna go over it now and just create some irregularities, some lumps and bumps. Perhaps I'll turn it down for this to the 2% size. And I'll just create an uneven top surface where there may be a collection of trees and whatever else. But it is pretty distant, so we don't want anything to stick up too far. Maybe as it comes over this side, we'll have some slightly more foreground trees. And then we're not gonna see this section because we're gonna add some different trees to there. So I'm gonna go back to my colors. I've got this second color, which is a green. I'll show you on the color disc. And I'm just going to, in and amongst what I've just done, just break it up with some of this green. Don't be too precious over it. We're just going over it again in a broken fashion just to add it in the mix. So it's not just one flat color, it's a mixture of that dark color and now this green. Okay, so we'll create another layer, go back to our colors, and we have this third color along, which is this green, you can see, which is much brighter. And I'm just going to put it up to 3% size and 50% opacity. And I'm just going to do it up to the lower bit of what we've just created, and then all the way across. And we're still on that same layer. And then I can put the brush up to 10% size and just start to a bit more randomly start to color this in. And now we've instantly got that separation between land and sky, which is great. Doesn't need to be rough, doesn't need to be 100% filled in. It looks fine as it is. 
go back to our layers and create another layer, back to our colors, and we've got this fourth color in, which I'm going to turn it down to 3% size and 30% opacity. We're still on the medium brush, and I'm gonna start bringing in this paler color all the way across. In fact, that's too big, so I'm gonna turn it down to 2%. So I want it at the top edge over here, but then as it comes down over here, I want it starting to lower down in a stripe like this. So it's a little bit of a separation there between the distant trees, a bit of green grass, and then this yellowy green color. And we can go back a layer, back to the green if we need to, and just make sure it's neat, make sure we've definitely got that green visible. Back to our top layer and create another layer on top of it. Go back to our colors. So we've used the first four. We're now gonna go for this fifth color along. And with the medium brush set to 4% size and 20% opacity, I'm gonna start building in some of this yellow to come further down into this area. And I'm gonna keep reducing the opacity down to 10% as we come down and have it sort of blending in. And I'm gonna create another separation here. In fact, it's gonna start encroaching down into this area. So we have a green band, then that first yellow green, then a gap, and then I'm gonna have it more broken over in this area with this kind of color. Like this. And then we can go in with our spray paints and the splatter and I've not done anything to it, it's exactly as it should be in the default settings. So I'm gonna reduce that down, let's just test that. And we've got the opacity about 70% and the brush size at about 5%. And I'm just gonna start now going over some of these areas and just building in some of this texture. It's really nice and immediate. And it does have a bit of orange in there as well, which is quite nice. You don't do too much, just, you know, if you're worried that you're going a bit too strong, you can reduce the opacity down to 60% or so, and start adding a bit more of this splatter in here. It's very impressionistic. It's really not going to clearly define any flowers, but it starts to give you the idea, and I'll reduce it down to 3% size, and I'm even going to take some of it up into this upper region as well. So I can press on quite a bit harder in those areas, start to bring more of it in. Okay. So I'm gonna create another layer. I'm gonna to go to my colors. I've used most of those so far, but I'm gonna to go to these colors for now. So I'm gonna use this really dark color. I'm gonna go back to my brushes on the Artistic Hearts brush. I'm gonna have it at 3% size and 60% opacity. And I'm gonna start building in some trees over on this side. Now it's gonna come a little bit lower down than that horizon line, because they're gonna be a little bit forwards. So we'll just take it down a little bit more I'll take it all the way along to about this point, maybe a little bit further, and then I'm just gonna start building it up. So we've got lots of shrubbery, lots of foliage and trees that are just building up in this area. And we have a foundation of a really dark color to begin with. And then we're gonna go over it and add some really nice vibrant greens. So there's absolutely no light getting through in this lower section, but then we're gonna reduce the size of that brush to the lower end of 2%. And then up at the top, I'm just going to allow slightly more broken textures and tufts where we can start to see gaps in the foliage and see things coming through. So we're still doing the silhouette foundation and then we'll go over it with a green as well. And then I can come over here. And at this point, I'm starting to build in some gaps, some light that's actually shining through in areas. And if I wanted to, I could go back to my medium brush, so airbrushing, medium brush, turn it down to one or lower end of 2%, and maybe build in stronger on the opacity at about 50%, and build in some trees, some branches, some tree trunks over in this section. So we've got a variety of different types of trees. So thicker tree trunks, reduce it down to 1%, and then some branches, keeping it really rough, because I'm just going to really go over it with textures anyway like so back to the artistic and the hearts brush and just in this lower section start to add some more of that texture again now it does look pretty poor at this point it's not a problem because we're going to go over it now so i'm going to create another layer to do this back to our colors and we've got these brighter greens so i'm going to use this second one turn the opacity down to about 30 percent should do it we'll keep it at around that two percent and i'm going to start building in now in addition to that 
dark colour, more broken green colours. I mean, maybe for some bits of it here, it will, we'll find that the edge is becoming predominantly green, so it has a leading edge of green, but then it could have a gap, and then another bit of green here, and then a gap, and another leading edge of green, and we start to build it up like this. So it might have some lower sections where we're just going to do it in that fashion, and then have it breaking down, disappearing. And then we'll come over to this side and we'll just, again, build it up, do some broken textures, especially in the lower sections. Keep it quite fragmented. So you get little clumps, little clusters, but then you get definite gaps as well. So the gaps are super important on this because that's going to reveal the dark tones that are underneath. So without those gaps, then you may as well not have done the dark tones. The gaps are absolutely crucial. And it comes down to this lower section and you can just begin kind of blurring in that edge. We'll go over it with the yellow color again, but you can start to begin blurring that in. Back to our colors and we've got an even brighter green here. So that's going to be good for this section. And again, continuing, not really paying too much attention to what you've just done underneath, but building in even more layers of texture. And then we can add some more in the upper sections of some of these trees as well. But try to treat some of the different areas a little bit differently. So we've got different types of greenery. So you might have some more foreground, some lower lying things that are more vibrant greens and then things that are just poking through from behind. Like this tree, I'm gonna leave a little bit darker perhaps. So you get some variation of different types of things growing. I'll just go around the edge of something here and around the edge of something here perhaps. It's all very loose, doesn't matter. I'm actually going to go back up to one of the darker greens that's on that middle layer. And I'm going to build in some green up into this top one, but I don't really want to go too far with it. I want to keep it separated from the bits that are lower down. And I'll do the same for these sections too. So I'm building in some green, but I don't want it to merge with what's here. So maybe I just add it in the upper sections a little bit more, that kind of thing. So I might, as I said before, go to the organic and the rainforest brush. And I can start adding some of that texture up into this region, but I think I need to start with this darker green on the middle row first. So I'll just backtrack and I'll build in some of this texture up here, perhaps with a 2% size brush might work better. And again, it's at 50% opacity. I can start building in some of this texture. So the branches were there, but they're largely going to be obscured now. So that's fine. And again, I can add a little bit of highlight. So I'll go to this third in green and perhaps with a really reduced size on that to 1%, I can just start building in some additional highlights into that foliage on that tree and start thinking where else I could add it as well. What else have we got? So we've got a really vibrant green here. We could also try, but I wouldn't do too much of that. So again, I'm on the rainforest brush. So we can add just bits of that into some of these levels over here as well. Predominantly the lower section, it just seems to be better to do it that way. Okay, so I'm gonna create another layer and I'm gonna go back to my yellower colors. And I do have this yellow color. I'm gonna go back to my spray paint splatter and it's on 3% size and 50, oh no, 60% opacity. And as we were doing before, I'm gonna start adding it into this section over here. In fact, I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more. So let's put it up at 80%. So it's really noticeable now. And we'll just go in here and we're starting to just, on the bottom edge of everything that we've just created, start to add some bright yellow. Let's turn it up a little bit more. So 4% size, let's see what that starts to do. And it's all trial and error with these texture brushes and see what impact it has. And that's really starting to build in a nice yellow now. So I can build this across, allow it to break and separate as it comes closer to us. Maybe increase the size to 6%, start to build it in. Let's really go for it. Let's put it up to 10% and see what that starts to do for us, lower down. Maybe turn the opacity down again to 70% and just keep alternating these to see the overall effects. That's too much. So we'll dial it back. Let's do a lower opacity at 50% and build over this area. And that seems to work a little bit better. And we can just start to build these in. It's really subtle when you turn it down and that is fine. 
Okay, I'm going to go back to my layer 7, um, back to my colours, and I realise that I need to have, have a base dark colour underneath here to then add texture over the top. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go to this first colour on the middle row, and on my soft brush, I'm going to put it up to about 10% size and about 50% opacity, and just start building in this dark colour. Now, it's very dark, and that is fine, but it's underneath some of these textures that we've just been adding, and that way it can work really well. I've done too much, so let's dial that back. So I don't want it going all the way up. So perhaps we'll just lighten that to 30% and just have it softening in around this point. So it's really quite dark in the foreground, but then it fades out, and you don't get the dark tone as it goes further beyond about here. Then we'll go back up to our upper layers, like this one with the yellow, but we'll create another layer above it, in fact. Then we'll go to our greens. So I'm going to go to the second green along, back to my textures, back to my splatter paints within the spray paints, and I'll put it at around the 10% again, and higher up about 80%, and just start building in some of this green now, bringing it a little bit further in. but it's not going to be enough of a texture, so we need to go perhaps to our airbrushing and medium brush, 2% size, 20% opacity, and perhaps we need to just start building in some upward lines. So we've got grass, which is obviously growing upwards, and certainly in this foreground, we just need to start creating shapes that go in different directions, but blades of grass, different things that are growing. You don't need to be too specific. You can spend ages on this and really refine these closer to details if it suits you, but I'm just trying to get the overall effect as quickly as possible for you. So I'm getting some blades that are really quite visible and noticeable and other bits that are really not. And we can have them kind of mushing together as they go further up. They get less noticeable up here. And I guess we get closer to us down here, we're gonna, we're gonna notice them a little bit more. And I'll just move all the way across. maybe change colour so we've got a lighter green here and we can introduce even more layers of texture so break it up a little bit and they don't all have to be lines they can be clumps and different colours of textures so play around just keep beyond this point just sort of clutter it up with textures then I'm going to create another layer go back to my colours we have some really bright colours here, so they are going to be different flowers, but you don't need to necessarily go into a huge amount of detail. So I'm going to go to this yellow, and with this medium brush, I'm going to turn it up to 70% opacity, and it is on the lowest part of 2%, and I'm just going to start piecing in a variety of different size of yellows, and just have clusters, perhaps getting smaller and merging in over at this lower point, so I'm pressing lightly doing smaller dots and as they get closer perhaps they just get a bit more apparent a bigger yellow but I'm, I'm really not spending much time on them at all I'm just trying to build in the effect so lighter press and smaller you could even turn it down to the lowest end of 2% for the distance and press on lightly and just do a load of individual points Back to our colours, we've got a couple of different colours here, so we've got a slightly more orangey version, so we can use that in the mix as well. You don't want it all completely one colour, it's better if you have it a mixture. Perhaps a combination of the splatter brush and my hand doing it as well. In fact, I don't like what it just did that, so I'm going to reduce all of that. I'm going to go back to my airbrushing and my medium brush. It is more time consuming, but I just prefer the look and I prefer the method personally, but you choose. I'm going to turn it up a little bit more, top end of 2%, start adding some more foreground elements. Try not to keep it quite as perfect a dot or yellow um, circle. Have it more broken, more suggestive. And we can play around with our other colors too. So we've got this dark pink, and perhaps in the mix, you can just have some different shapes different colours and then you can go over it with a lighter pink and just carefully try to merge them together with the other colours that you've got. So 
we're only creating impressions of things. There's nothing specific happening here other than clusters of dots that are suggestive. And we've got this middle pink as well. We can just combine. Add some highlights and touches of lighter sections. And it's slightly out of focus because it's really close to us perhaps. So alternate between the pink and then the really light pink. And then we've also got the dark pink. We can add some different things in the mix. Back to my yellows and I'm just going to add with the lower end of 2% more of these little individual yellow dots for flowers and you can really go to town, spend as long. It's okay to leave some gaps too, not every single part of it needs to have this. It's also okay to do the opacity really low, something like about 5% and turn it up and just may maybe just increase the sense that you've got a large amount of that colour in a section that's all merging together. That can work very nicely too. And with another layer, I'm just going to do some refining. So I'm going to go back to my dark green brush and turn it down to the lower end of 2%, but turn it up to about 40%. And I'm just going to add maybe a tree over in this section. Again, I'm just going to keep it quite broken. Don't need to add a lot of detail. A little bit of shadow, perhaps just lightly add that in. And then some texture over here as it's just going out of the frame. And Maybe I'll add with a slightly lower brush actually, lower end of 2%, just add some bigger shapes here, but things that not quite the distance, more of a middle distance, so they're a little bit bigger, more trees that are apparent. We don't need to go into too much detail. Back in with my green yellow, maybe I'll just define up that edge where they kind of join together a little bit more. And it works quite nicely. Back in with the yellow on the end and just maybe just sharpen up that edge maybe increase that yellow that's up in this upper section and I'm also going to go back to my white with my soft brush down to 2% and I'm going to put it quite high at about 60% and I'm just going to go in there and just define the top edge of some of these clouds a little bit further just to really sell the idea there's a bright light coming down on it which is obviously the sun and really bring out the sunshine in this piece of work. Okay, I'm gonna leave this tutorial here at this point. It is quite rough in many ways, but it's getting to the overall effect and just showing you some of the kind of textures that you can use to create these different effects. I hope you've enjoyed following along. If you're pleased with your results, don't forget to share them with me. Give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment of suggestions to kind of things you'd wanna see in the future, and I hope to catch you back here soon. See you later.